and hi. Hi, Jeff, and hi, Culver City Dems. How are you this evening? Um, thank you for inviting me. It's so great to be here. Um, I'm running in June on June 7th for two, actually two seats, 8062, Special General, and 8061. 8062 goes from Gardena, um, El Segundo, uh, uh, West Athens, Westmont, Londale, Hawthorne, Lenox, Inglewood, Westchester, Playa del Rey, Playa Vista, uh, Marina del Rey, and a, a slither of Venice. And then the 61st, we lose El Segundo, we lose Gardena, and we pick up the whole entirety of Venice and a little bit of the 8th um, uh, LA City Council District. And so it changes and shifts a little bit. Go on, I, I, are you want to ask, do you guys want to ask me questions, Jeff? Um, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more and then maybe we can take some questions. Well, we see this is a special election. Um, this is the seat vacated by Assemblywoman Autumn Burke. We just had our um, special election on April 5th, the primary. Um, I led in, it was four candidates, four Democrats. I led in the pack, I led the pack by um, 1,200 votes. Um, and so uh, a little bit about me, I come from uh, the county. I used to be, I started my career working for DPSS at 19. Um, there is when I first fell in love with being a union rep. Uh, at, at 20, I was a local 660 union rep. It's now 721. I moved from there to LA County Office of Education, where I was an auditor. I, while I was at DPSS, I earned my accounting degree from junior college and then went on at Southwest College and went on at Chicago Dallas Dominguez to earn my um, accounting degree. Um, from there, I worked at Kaufman Legal Group as a treasurer. At the time, I was the treasurer for two people run, running for mayor, Kevin De, Kevin De Leon and Congresswoman Karen Bass. And I would say that I'm not in, in that race because they're both my friends. And so from there, I moved on to, to work for Steve Bradford when he ran. He was a city councilman of Gardena. I ran his campaign office. We won. I went in as his district director, served his pretty much almost his full term. In his last year, Supervisor Yvonne Bradway Burke asked me to run her daughter Autumn Burke's campaign. I didn't know Autumn, but when Supervisor Burke asked you to do something, you do it. And so I did, and I uh, I ran Ms. Burke's campaign. We won. I went on to be her chief of staff for several legislative cycles. Then I was tapped to uh, work for the California Democratic Party as their operations director. I was the first African-American director at the party. From there, I decided to come back home to LA and I landed at LA Voice and LA Voice Action. LA Voice is a three seat organization. I'm the civic engagement director. We organize um, about 63 multi-faith, multi-racial congregations across the county around immigration, housing, transformative justice and police accountability. It's been an amazing time there. I was there about three years last year. I led over uh, uh, over hundreds of clergy from across the state to pass SB2, the Police Accountability Act, um, authored by uh, Senator Steve Bradford, my ex-boss, so it was great to work with him. I also work, we also have a C4 called LA Voice Action. In that capacity, I'm the deputy director. And in 2020, this is 2022, in 2020, I led, uh, I led two independent expenditures for two of the most progressive uh, office holders in LA County, George Gascon and Holly Mitchell, and we won. I led a coalition of nonprofits to do that. So I decided to run for this seat because I have tons of legislative um, experience. I was the only candidate out of the pack that ran that actually went to Sacramento and, and had um, legislative experience. I also have the connection with the district. And by working at uh, LA Voice, I have connection with the community. And so I wanted to take all this experience I have and all the one-on-ones and the things I've done in the nonprofit world in the last three years and go to Sacramento and do some really, really bold policy. I'm gonna wrap this up really quick, but my first piece of policy that I'd like to do when I get to Sacramento, it's called the California ID Act. And we just added the social security card where people coming out of uh, state prison can get a California ID and a social security card. We used to do this during the Reagan administration, but they cut before the Reagan administration, but they cut it out of the budget. It's easy to do. 
They already have these folks record and it's a way that they can come out and they can feel normal and humane. And if the police stop them, they won't get, you know, bothered. And they maybe they can go and get a job immediately or housing. It just makes it easier for their lives because we want people to come out. And all these folks want to do, I've been working with them in the last three years, is come out and live life just like you and I. And I think that um, in the transformative justice space, it would be a great idea. So I'll stop there. The campaign, well, I'll stop there. I have plenty more to say, but I'll stop there. Great, thanks. So if anyone would like to, to ask Tina anything, please re raise your Zoom hand and, you know. Well, if no one has any questions, then um, I'll just say that, you know, uh, my day job is at the Santa Monica Public Library, where we do a lot of work with uh, the unhoused and getting people uh, photo IDs is a really crucial and surprisingly difficult thing. So that's really important work you're doing. And, you know, I thank you for it in advance. You're welcome. I'm seeing that some of our friends, LA Voice friends are in, in the house. Oh, uh, Freddie Puza has a question. Go ahead, Freddie. Yeah, hi, Tina. Thanks for coming tonight. Really excited about your candidacy. I read in the LA Times um, an article um, that you pushed for legislation to reform Prop 13. Um, can you talk more about that and kind of like your vision for that moving forward, especially since the last proposition didn't pass? I know the last proposition, I was working at LA Voice, so we did, we, we, did, we turned in a signature. So we, I would say we did probably about 10,000 signatures. And then during the camp, we also ran a C3 because during on a C3 nonprofit, I know I'm talking about these C3, the C3 nonprofit, you actually can campaign for propositions. So we did a phone bank for the proposition as well. And we did a faith based um, uh, proposition recommendation card that we put out in our, to our um, constituents and all of our lay leaders and clergy. But I was just starting to work. Yeah, proposition fifth class failed in Culver City. It it actually, guys, it passed in LA City. But all the little small cities around it, we found, are a little bit more conservative, or maybe their leadership is even more conservative. And when I say that, like there's mayors and city council people, and so maybe it was just a little bit more conservative. And so I don't think we had enough leaders talking about how this affects our community. So. I started working on this proposition to put it on the ballot for 2024. I sit in a coalition to do that. I think that we just have to learn how to talk to people about the proposition. We know we did really well. It was framed with really well. We named what a small business was, and I can't remember the criteria, but we did do a definition of this is a small business that won't be touched by this. We know that we named that our residential taxes wouldn't go up and that we were really targeting these big corporations that have not, that their boards changed hand, but their titles didn't change hand. So they're still paying 1970 property taxes. And when we did this, we really, really ruined our schools. We look at schools like that's in my district, Inglewood School District, that we have, our schools are in receivership, like we're hurting because we don't have those resources that we used to have, that we should have to catch us up. And it's not just schools, and we call it schools and communities first, but it's our community when we talk about how the cities are run with our police. Like I wouldn't defund the police. I need to call 911. I don't think that's a good idea, but I think that we don't have equitable budgets. And when we, when we, because we pay the police too much and we're not investing in our community. So we could take some of that proposition, uh, reform and proposition 13 money and invest in our communities. We're not just talking about schools. We're talking about elder center, job centers, youth programs, sports. Like this is low on the bar guys sports, you know, uh, art and music, things that'll make our community better. And so, you know, my plan is to continue to support uh, the uh, reform of Proposition 15 to uh, roll that back. And um, I'm going to do everything I can once I'm in the legislature to support that because we need it. Great. Thanks. Uh, uh, Kimberly Ferguson, go ahead. Hi, I'm very impressed with everything you had to say. I, I, I feel a little, I'm trying to put, formulate my 
question, but it has to do with the idea you have for making sure that when prisoners are released and ready to be reformed into the community, um, isn't there some legislation that they're formulating now to also provide a better amount of funding for their first release so that they can find proper housing and there's some other things that go with that too that would also go along with what you want to do is there some legislation already out about that or you know what i think so but i would be i have to be honest that i would be much more up on uh, legislation i wasn't running for office. i know there's enough out there though <laughs> yeah be honest but i think it's a great idea going with your driver's license idea i think everything to make them feel more assimilated make them give them human you know you want people the thing i learned working for la voice which i mean i'm just so blessed to have worked there is that we have to th look at thing in a, things in a more holistic way mm -hmm. right we have to think every time we look at legislation we gotta we have to think about our neighbor you know i mean i have a home i'm happy i, I have a pretty cool neighborhood i live in hearthorn you know i have a pretty mm -hmm. nice but we have to think about what's happening with our neighbor. We have to think about, are we treating people like human beings? Are we treating them with humanity? I would have to say the driver's license thing just gives people a second chance to come out. And when they first get out, they don't have to worry about being harassed because they don't have a driver's license or ID. Yeah. How to get to the DMV. Have you been to the DMV lately? It's horrible. Oh, no. <laughs> their social security card we just really have to legislate and that's the lens that i'm going to be thinking about my neighbor and is this a humane way for our community to grow together sounds a great idea fantastic thank you uh tina thank you kimberly and freddie oh no 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 my fingernails are the color of of um of of um seiu <laughs> Let me correct. No, I was just someone said something about my fingernails, and I wanted to say no, no, no. They're purple and gold for the youth. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. Well, I was just thanking everybody and moving on. I think, but great to meet you. Hope to see you again. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. Look forward to talking to you guys soon.